Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to tune your bass drum. Um, before we get started, I just want to say, um, if your bass drum is sounding uh, out of tune or not muffled enough or too echoey or just not sounding the way you want it to sound and you believe that it already is tuned, it's probably because of the environment it, it's, it's in. If it's in like a room with no, um, with nothing to absorb the sound, such as padding like my room has, or um, studio, studio foam, or whatever to absorb the sound. If you're just in a bare wall room where it's just, it's just walls, there's nothing to, um, anything soft to really absorb sound. It's really just, that's what muffles sound. That's why you muffle any, that's why you muffle drums with like, a pillow or something like that so um first of all you want to make sure that your bass drum when you play is in a room that has that in it to get to know what your bass drum actually sounds like so you can hear just the sound and not all the extra echoes that are coming that are bouncing off the walls so like right now my voice isn't bouncing off the walls first of all because it's a small room second of all because i have a low voice but mostly it's because of the padding so now that you know that and that could be your problem. And if it's not, if you are in like a studio type of room or a room that doesn't have issues with echoes, that doesn't have bare walls, then obviously you want to tune your bass drum. It might, it might sound out of tune, number one, or it's just too echoey because of the muffling and it just is really a long term, just really long extended bass sound that you don't want in order to cut that off. I understand that. So. Um, I've already tuned my bass drum, but I can tell you how to tune it, it's not very hard. Um, first what you're going to want to do is, what you're going to want to do is, um, okay, let me come around here. If your bass drum is basically like mine where it's set up and the pedals are all hooked up to it, you're going to want to unhook, you're going to want to unscrew or unhook the pedals from the bass drum. You're going to want to tip it over so that this head is facing up, so it's sitting on its um, resonant head, so it's sitting on this head. And then once you do that, you want to tune that head by basically loosen all of these lugs to the point where they're, where they're um, not touching the rim and it's loose, it's wiggly. It's not tightened down at all. It's just, it's like popping out a little bit. Loosen all of them up so that all of them are popped up in the rim. You can move it. Um, if you have something like this on here, make sure that that's facing exactly how you want it before you tighten them down. You want to make sure that those are right where you want them. So you want to line that up somehow. Sometimes I use a drumstick to, you know, see if it's straight, kind of. That can help. Um, or if you just got one, wait and put it on after it's tuned. Alright, so now what you want to do is, you just want to make sure these are what you call finger tight. Usually it's how you tune any drum, is basically you want to start by making them all equal, which would be finger tight. Because that's, that's the best method to getting them equally tight without using any, any special device or anything like that, etc. So, um, the best way to do this is by doing the star pattern. If you know what, if you don't know what that is, it's I'll use uh, this tom to show you. It's like you would you would tighten this if you you just start wherever, and then you'd go to the lug next to it on either side, and then after you go to the one next to it, you'd go to the one across from that, and then you do the same thing. Go to the one next to it, across from that, one next to it. And obviously the one across from this one was the one where I started. And that's how you really equally tighten it all the way around as you're tightening the head down so you don't get it all like warped up and whatnot. So it's as equally as possible. You do that with the bass drum head, but you don't use the drum key. Use your fingers. That's why they say it's called finger, tw finger tight. So you want to um, take your fingers like on the top or the side right here and just keep on turning it until you can't anymore. And once it's at that point, you want to push down on the rim 
right where the lug is. So you want to just push down on it as you're tightening it with one hand and pushing down on it on the other as hard as you can. So it's just so tight you can't, your fingers hurt, you can't tighten it anymore. You want to do that with every lug in a star pattern. Once you do that on the bass drum, you're set. It's basically tuned. Um, depending on the sound you want, at that point you want to take the key. Before you do anything else, you want to take this key. You want to do the same exact thing, the star pattern, and you just want to wiggle it and make sure that they're all uh, the same amount of tight. Because some of them might be a little bit looser than the others, and while you wiggle it, you want to put as much pressure again as you can on the rim. It's the same exact thing. Just use the key, but don't, don't, um, don't have the intention. Okay, I'm just gonna tighten these all a little bit. No, you're just gonna put the key on it and feel. Okay, that's about that tight. So I'm gonna want this one just as tight. So if it's any looser than how hard I'm wiggling it to make it not to make it uh, move, you want to do it with the same with each one in the star pattern. You want to hold down the rim as well when you do that. Now once, you, now once you can feel with this key that these are all like the same all the way around, you can, at, after that point you can just go all the way around. You can just go all the way around the, the rim on each lug or you can match or you can match the lug. You can feel, okay this one's about this tight. Okay and now make them all as equally tight as this one lug. You can do it any way you want really. Just make sure that they're all equally tight by feeling it with this because that'll like that's almost like double checking it to make sure that the head will stay on and it's equally tight and it's tuned at that point. Now you can put your, your uh, kick drum back up and you can test it, you can see how it sounds, you go, okay, I kind of like that sound. Obviously I want it more muffled because it's going to be really echoey if there's nothing in there, which there shouldn't be at this point. That's the first step. There's like three steps to tuning a bass drum. The first step is what I just explained, tuning this head. So now after that you want to leave it up. You want to leave the pedals connected to it after that head is tuned and you've tested it. You go, okay, I kind of like that sound. If you don't, then you can tighten it or you can do that all, all over again and make it a little bit looser and not so finger tight. Now, after that, you want to take off your resonant head. You want to just take it off, set it aside, and um, then you want to design what kind of muffling you want in it or how much you want, really. It's just really about how much you want it as far as the placement of the muffling, um, the only real placement there is for the bass drum is how much you want it touching the back of this head, which I'll show you. Let me just grab a flashlight. So, see how I have a pillow in there, I tried duct taping it to the head so it would stay if I were to move the drum, or just to make sure it would stay to keep, to keep it where I want it up against the head, which didn't work out too well, so what I'm going to do is uh, show you what it sounds like now, and then I'll, I'll record it what it sounds like now, I'll um, stop recording and I'll take another take of after I or while I am retaping this just to show you what I do, how I muffle it. So once you do once you um, have that head off, then you want to put your muffling in and you see so I don't know if your head has this, but if it does, mine has mine is a Tama Imperial Star bass drum, it's like a twenty two inch and it has like a muffling kind of thing built into it. See you can see that that, that muffling. It has like a, an extra uh, ply a ring around, all the way around the head and that's sort of where I put the uh, pillow and a folded sheet up against it right up to that like line and then I put the pillow a little bit higher than that so basically right where the chain is on my pedal you can see that so that's basically how I had it but it sort of started to slip down but honestly I really like the sound of my bass drum right now the only thing I'm afraid of is that it keeps moving or if I were to go play a show and, I, and it gets moved around a lot before it gets set up on, on stage or wherever I set it up and then and then I have to uh, take off my head and re redo that, maybe even get some duct tape and try and get it to stay and then retune the head again and everything so I want to go through that process every time I move it. So really the main goal is just 
keeping your muffling in your bass drum if you don't have a lot of money. Um, what they do have is a, a Velcro, a Velcro padding. I think by Evans sells them, and you can put the Velcro in your bass drum to keep it from staying. Well, I don't have money to go out and buy that, so I would rather just use a nice pillow with some duct tape, and it works great and it sounds great. So. I'm gonna do like a before and after, so I'm gonna record. I'll show you what I do to change the muffling just to keep it from moving, and then we'll record after just to see if the sound changed a lot or a little or if at all. So here we go. Also, you want to take into account for I have a 12 inch tom, 16 inch tom, and a 14 inch snare drum. And obviously, since they're hollow, they can create echoes when I hit one of the drums. So, the bass drum is also going to have a little bit of echo in each of these drums, and especially the toms and the snare, because they're not completely muffled. And obviously, you wouldn't want a completely muffled drum. So, just take into account for that as well. but. The majority of it is the bass drum. I like it. It's a nice, loud, solid punch. It's low. It's exactly what I want. The only thing is the muffling is not staying. So I want to try and change that a little bit without changing the sound. And if the sound does change, I'm hoping maybe it'll sound a little bit better. So we'll see. So there's single. I'll play the double. sounds like currently. Alright. I'll be right back. I'm going to take off the head. Alright, so now I took off the resonant head. So once you got that off, just in case you can't see, I have an old pillow and underneath that I have a sheet which I taped to the pillow, so that's secured. Now the only thing about muffling really is just to make sure that it's secured and that it's in the center of the bass drum. And depending on the sound that you want, you're going to want it again. I want it against the head so you get a better sound. Um, not too much, but a little bit. So for me it's easy because I have that little ring, so that's kind of where I know where I want it up against the head, around that area, so I just kind of put it right up against that so it did slip down a little bit All right, so I'm just gonna leave that right there alright I'm gonna have to put the camera down um, is, that, is that gonna work? possibly Right, I'm gonna fix this real quick. All right, so like when you're when you're trying to get it up against the head, there's a little bit of a, uh, I guess a ditch you can say, between the head and the edge of the actual drum shell and the head kind of sinks in a little bit. You really want to tuck in uh, the pillow or whatever it is in that so you know that it's 
it's as far up against it as you can so there's no you know spots where the sound can can get in so once you get that nice and tucked in make sure that it's still high enough to where it's touching up against the head just like um, in case you don't have that ring which you probably don't um, I don't know if you do but it's probably about an inch or so maybe a little over an inch up against the head maybe two inches depending on what sound you want but I'd say it's about an inch inch and a half at the most an inch and a quarter maybe um, touching the head so basically once you got that about a little over an inch touching the head and tucked up against it you want like a little bit of a layer of, of muffling not just one thing at the bottom depending on the sound that you want once again so once you got that which I basically fix it, it doesn't take that long um, now I'm just going to show you how I'm going to tape it as opposed to the way I taped it before because it's just going to keep coming off and sliding down and that may change the sound and then maybe it's not going to stay secure if I move around and play other places so I'm just what I'm going to do is just use duct tape that's pretty much the best tape you can use for this and I'm going to tape from the muffling over top of the muffling and just go all the way around the shell to about the top and then I'm going to take another piece and do the other half. I'm not going to do uh, one whole like circle because if it starts to come off in one spot then that whole thing is going to come off. So you want to do like maybe a half on each side. And I guess if you're not sure what I'm trying to say I'll just show you. So basically I'm going to start in the middle of the pillow Um, actually, I'd rather not tape over the the screws for the lugs, just in case you need access to them or for whatever reason. I'd rather keep this nice and clean, as clean as possible. So I'm gonna try taping in between. Plus, this tape is just wide enough to fit in between. So what I do actually is start at the top. All right, now I can show you what I did. So I started right here. 
and then I went in between all of those to keep it straight. I tried my best. And then I stopped right in the middle. Right in the middle of the pillow. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Um, so now it may, it'll probably start to, you know, come off when there's putting pressure up against the head and it's pushing up against the pillow. If I'm like doing really fast, you know, 30 second notes on the double bass drum or whatever. Um, but it, it's not going to come off all the way up here, so it's going to still stay somewhere along this line up against the bass drum. That way I'll be able to move it. Um, it shouldn't change too much how, how it sounds. If it really does, then that'll be a new discovery for me, so. And that'll be on added to my list of don't do's for drums. So I'm just going to do the other side to this real quick, so I'll, I'll be back. Alright, so as you can see, I have the other side, other half taped all the way up. I did a little bit better on that one, and it actually looks pretty, pretty even for the most part. And now, hopefully the muffling will stay, and I know the muffling is, is, um, a sufficient amount, because I've tried it, and it sounds great, have you heard before, as you've heard before in the other, in the first recording. So now, the last step in this is to do the resonant head, and make sure that's tuned, which is basically the same as the batter head. The only difference is with the resonant head, you don't really want to worry about how tight it is because you're not worrying about getting the tone out of it so much as you are just sealing the front part of the drum to contain that, that sound. Um, if you've seen a lot of uh, famous drummers in studios do recordings, they will actually leave the front part of the bass drum open just to get a good sound because they are, they, you already have the sound you have at this point. The only thing you want is to contain it because it's not, it's such a short, uh, sound so you could even just leave it like this if you prefer it all it all um, depends on your preference of sound but for mu for majority of people and for my preference I would prefer to have the head on and tuned so to tune it obviously you need to line up your logos and everything if you really care about you know all of that you want to line it up first and slowly start uh, making sure that these are all about enough to the point where it's touching the washer they're that far in on all of them equally so that the head so that the um, the head or the rim can't move and that this is lined up so you can well so this so the rim can move but the head can't and you can um, adjust that once that's adjusted I'll I'll um, finger tighten them just like the other head but not so tight just mainly with my fingers so I'm going to have to come back and show you after I'm done. I can't really hold the camera at the same time. Alright, so now I got the head on and all of the lugs are tightened enough to where they're basically touching the washer on all of them, but it's still it's still loose. But it's, it's on there enough. So now basically you just want to make sure that that's lined up. You know, just keep kind of, kind of adjusting it. Some people don't even really care if the logo is lined up or not. I do because I have other things on there. Um, I don't care about it being perfect, but as long as it looks straight to the rest, to everyone else. Alright, so once that's straight, now you want to go around and finger tight as tight as you can on all the lugs. It doesn't matter whether you're going star pattern or if you try to match one, it doesn't matter which method you really choose as long as you feel that each lug is about the same tight all the way around. Um, once you're at that point, you want to use your foot, not your hand, because your foot can, is able to apply a little bit more pressure than your hand. If you're like sitting down, I've noticed that you can see more wrinkles with your foot so that way you know um, which ones are not quite as tight as all the others and those are the ones that you want to kind of focus on as you're going all the way around making sure that they're equally tight once you see no wrinkles and you feel that it's it's pretty solid it's um, it's solid and it's it um, just feels tight to you then you want to uh, take a drumstick or something and just kind of tap around and make sure you get the sound that you want and then once they all sound equal to you and it sounds good then you can test it so we'll go from there 
and um, I'll just start finger tightening these. <clears throat> Okay, so I have it, I have the head lined up as best as I can, and now I'm just trying to finger tighten all of them. Just want to grab it as best you can and just keep turning so I can't turn anymore. As best you can. Okay, once you go all the way around, you can kind of, you can use your fist, you can use your thumb like this to go all the way around and feel how tight the he head is near each lug. Now, what I'm going to do is use my foot like I suggested. Let's see if you can see any wrinkles. Yep, right there. Not sure if you can see them, but yeah, there we go. You can see the reflection of the carpet. It's also the best way to, to find wrinkles in a dark room is shine a light on it, and you can see the reflection of whatever's in it if it's not straight. See, now the carpet's straight, but when I push my foot up against it, there's the wrinkles. So the, mo the most part of the head's good, just that one part. So I'm just going to go run one more time and tighten them a little bit more. And that's about it really as far as tuning the resonant head is just making sure that there's no wrinkles and that it's just tight enough to capture the sound without any, any looseness to ruin the sound. Okay, so I did feel that these are a little bit looser. Also, I don't know if this is all drum heads or if it's just mine, but it has like one spot where it kind of sticks out a little bit. And it goes right here. That's where the wrinkles were. Alright. using wrinkles now look at the reflection here I'm pushing my foot up against it no wrinkles it's still that carpet line is still straight see that there is one there though but um, keep in mind if your head like my bass drum head has a ring going around it um, that can also cause a little bit of what sounds like might be the head itself is loose or it's wrinkly when you prep when you put pressure on it near the lug. It's actually not. It's just a little the little um, pocket shape it makes with the ring on the other side, and it's just hitting that ring. But you can't. No matter how tight you get it, it's not really going to go away. So don't let that um, confuse you. Alright, so I'm just going to like double check with the key and go all the way around with the key this time just to make sure that they're tight and that there's no wrinkles and the sound is good and then I'll show you what it sounds like the after. So what I'm doing is I'm just wiggling it to, to get a feel for how tight it is. I'm not turning it or anything like that. I'm just wiggling it without, without changing the the tension and if any of them are looser than that you'll be able to tell because it'll move a little bit so you're kind of just messing with it you're kind of just jiggling it any any little looseness out of it you just got to feel for how 
how much um, strength it takes in your arm to or your wrist to turn it. And some of them. You're gonna get a little bit more tighter because they're just a little bit loose still. So you're almost trying to perfect it. You, just, you can go around as many times as you want, but I wouldn't suggest to go around a ridiculous amount of times because at that point you may just accidentally turn one a little bit too much that's already tight, and then you're going to end up tightening the head, and it's going to throw you off, and you're going to start all over because you're not going to know how much looser you're going to want it. You always want to tune it up. You never want to tune it back down. So... At this point, I feel like they're all kind of tight, and none of them are have that little bit of looseness. I've already went around like what two, three times, so I got a good amount of pressure there. I'm just gonna take my finger here and listen for any anything bad. same not so much when you go all the way around the circle you might get a little bit different sounds all right just uh, Now I'm gonna record with this here. Set that down. See. Let's see what it sounds like. So now that the muffling is more up against the head, like up higher and more in tucked into between the head and the, the edge of the shell of the drum, I think it captured all that sound that it had before, so now it's a more tighter, um, shorter kick, but it still, it still is very low, so I, I really like the sound. And as I break it in a little bit more with the muffling, it's probably still going to move a little bit, it's probably still going to move a little bit. And as I do that, it'll kind of uh, loosen the sound up more, so it'll probably be a more longer uh, sound instead of a quick thump. It'll probably be a bigger boom. But other than that, this is pretty much what it sounds like. <laughs> 